The Second Amendment protects the right to keep and bear arms. We know this. But what does the language actually mean? Well, today we're going to look at one source of evidence about what the Second Amendment means, specifically other similar language that can be found in state constitutions that were adopted around the same time as the Second Amendment. In the landmark decision of Heller, the U.S. Supreme Court held that the Second Amendment protects an individual right to bear arms in the home. Now again, the Heller decision involved restrictions on keeping a gun in the home, but the court right now is deciding a case called Bruin discussing whether or not we have the right under the Second Amendment to carry a gun outside the home. Now one key question in both Heller and the Bruin case today is what does the Second Amendment's language mean? Specifically, what does it mean and what did it mean at the time it was adopted in the year 1791? Well, if you had talked to the gun control crowd, the anti-gun crowd, they've long claimed that the right to bear arms, historically they say, just means uh, you're allowed to carry a gun in the militia or the military or the National Guard or something like that. Not specifically allowing you or doesn't allow you specifically to carry guns for private self-defense of you and your family. Now, does our American history bear out that theory? Well, you'll find out it doesn't. One place we can look to try to figure out what the Second Amendment's text means is other similar constitutional provisions adopted by the states for state constitutions at around the time that the United States Constitution and the Second Amendment was adopted at the federal level. Now, we all talk all the time about the United States Constitution and the Second Amendment, but did you know that each state has its own state constitution that sets forth the rights of their respective citizens of those states, as well as the form of government and the way that government runs in each particular state. So let's say New York State will have its own constitution that sets up how the state of New York is run and what citizen rights are in New York State guaranteed by the state constitution. That, of course, is in addition to the federal constitution and the federal Bill of Rights, which includes, of course, the Second Amendment. Now, around the time that the Second Amendment was adopted in 1791, Nine states had adopted similar provisions that sounded a lot like the Second Amendment dealing with the right to bear arms. And they did that as part of their state constitutions, those nine states. Because state constitutional provisions use similar language to the Second Amendment in a very similar context, they provide powerful evidence, historical and legal evidence, of what the right to keep and bear arms meant to the people who wrote and adopted the Second Amendment. And when you look at those state constitutions, it becomes completely clear that the right to bear arms did not just mean the right to join a militia, whatever that means. It meant the right to carry arms for private, individual self-defense. Anti-gunners in the anti-gun community have argued for years that the Second Amendment grants only a so-called collective right to serve in a militia or the military, which basically means you have no individual right or private right to self-defense outside of the military context. Now, under this interpretation by the anti-gunners, when the Second Amendment talks about bearing arms, it's really, according to them, just a fancy way of referring to our right, so-called so right, to serve in a militia, the National Guard, or the military, whatever that means. That's what they're arguing. But until the Heller case in 2008, that interpretation, that collective rights interpretation uh, about the Second Amendment had won the day in certain courts in America. But the problem is, if you look historically at the time period of the Second Amendment, you'll see that there were nine state constitutions that used the same language that would be a right to bear arms in a way that is obviously talking about carrying guns for private self-defense and not just serving in a militia or the military or the National Guard. Let's start with Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's Declaration of Rights, for example, guaranteed the people's right to bear arms for defense of themselves and the state. Defense of themselves and the state. 
Now, Vermont, Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana all basically use that same phrase from Pennsylvania. And Mississippi said that every citizen has a right to bear arms in defense of himself and the state, both. And so did Connecticut, Alabama, and Missouri. Now, this evidence explodes the notion that the bear arms or to bear arms just means to serve in the militia or as the state constitutions put it, to bear arms for the defense of the state. Instead, these state constitutional provisions clearly say that an individual also has a right to bear arms in defense of himself. That is, of course, in private self-defense and for private self-defense purposes. Now, Heller, in Heller, the Supreme Court carefully explained all of this. I'm not making this up. The U.S. Supreme Court already discussed this in the Heller case specifically. But while the anti-Second Amendment scholars and advocates seem to continue to kind of repeat the claim that the Second Amendment, at least in terms of carrying guns, is somehow limited to the militia context, they have never persuasively explained how their theory fits with these nine similar provisions in the state constitutions and how they square those circles. And why? That's because, in my view, they can't do it. Now, to wrap up, today we've seen how the state constitutions enacted around the same time as the Second Amendment help us understand the meaning of the right to keep and to bear arms. And we've also seen how those state provisions make one thing crystal clear, and that is that the right to bear arms includes the right to carry guns for individual private self-defense. Okay, well, thanks for joining me today on the Four Boxes Diner, where we serve hot, fresh Second Amendment news and analysis on a daily basis. If you enjoyed this segment, please subscribe to this channel and help us spread the word. We'll see you next time here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.